A couple of years ago, I was doing a mission uh, down near Sorrento. It's uh, slightly north of Sorrento, a place called Castellamare. And uh, there was a, one of the people in the parish who was a, a teacher in a school in Naples. So she invited me to come visit her class uh, in this, this school in Naples. And I said, no problem at all. So uh, I went in to the school. I'd never seen anything quite like it because I'm used to our schools and how our schools work. Um, the school was very, very different. It was in a very dodgy neighborhood and for the state and for the parents, it was just enough that the kids turned up. It was just enough that they were in the school building. Uh, if something slightly educational happened there, good, that's a bonus. But the, the, the thing was just to kind of get them through the system, right? give them something to do. So it was a very uh, strange kind of thing. Also, and there's another issue there that teachers tend to only teach in a school for one or two years and then they move on to another school. So there's no kind of follow through. You don't have to get a class through to their exam. You just have to teach them for a year and then you're gone. So, uh, it, yeah, so the education, it wasn't really great for them. It was, uh, but anyway, so I was walking along down this corridor and I was supposed to be going to, we call it room 8B. So as I'm walking along though, all the rooms of the various classes are open and I was kind of like the Pied Piper. I was walking along and I looked around and I saw the classrooms were starting to empty because all these Napolitani kids saw this white dude, right, because I'm fairly, in comparison to them, I'm mozzarella. They used to call me Padre Mozzarella. Uh, <laughs> so I'm white out in comparison to them. So I look, I look back and there's this corridor full of lads. And they're like, hey, Padre, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm going to 8B. Uh, we come too. And like, just like, uh, there isn't room. So they had to get the whole the big aula, right, the whole big hall, the assembly area. And basically the whole school ended up turning up. <laughs> and as usual, kind of turning up, they're Italian, so they started coming in late as well after I'd started, which is very annoying. Um, so the, you're the only fella there with a mic, and you're the only non-Italian speaker, non-native uh, Italian speaker. Kind of somewhat intimidating. But anyway, you give it loads, and uh, you try to transmit to them the, the joy of the faith and, and God's purpose for their life and God's hope, right? You try to, try to give them all of this. Then afterwards, I had a small little group of them, about 20 of them in a, in a classroom. And uh, so I was just talking to them about, yeah, about God, God's plan for their life and God's plan for their happiness. And I said, you know, God has this, this plan in his mind for you and for your happiness, you know, for your future. And they just kind of smiled. And I, I just said, you know, you have to kind of play it tough kind of thing. I said, what are you smiling at? And the fellow said, Father, you don't understand. He said, we're, not gonna, we're never going to get out of here. And I said, of course you are. Of course you can. Of course, if you wish. I mean, if you study and you get your exams, then surely, like, doors open, you can go work in different places, no? And they said, no, no, it doesn't, no. As soon as we say we're from Ponticelli, that's it. That's it. It's like, there are certain places in Ireland where we could name it, we won't, because people will get offended. But, like, if you're from a certain area in Limerick, I think we all know one, there's like, an, area, an area or two in Dublin, and if you say you're from there, all right? So... As soon as we say we're from Ponticelli, we don't stand a chance of getting a job. Not only that, if we're standing outside the school, outside the school, we could be approached by a fellow who'd say to us, see this little package here, this little brick type shape thing? Bring this to this address on the far side of the city, I'll give you 300 euro. Don't ask what's in it, and you've got 300 euro. Good, it's 300 euro. Me kek a son shame which means it's not like I'm stupid, battery. of course I'm gonna do it. And it just, my heart just sank for them. My heart absolutely sank. They said, Padre, siamo delinquenti. Father, we are delinquents. That was it, they were just resigned to the fact, stuck, just stuck in this mentality. This is all we're going to be forever. This is our life. There is no hope, there is no way out. There's no alternative, you know? And it was, just, it was so saddening, just so hopeless. I think I'm, I, I may have even stood there mouth agape for, for a second or two because it's, it's different for us in Ireland. You know, in Ireland, thank God, I mean, it's not perfect, but in Ireland we have a good educational system. And if you study well, it doesn't matter if you're a politician's son or a pauper. It makes no difference at all. If you get the points, you can get into college. Now, if you can, you can work your way through, you can, you know, you, you can work over the summer or, or get a job on the weekends to pay your way through. But bo bottom line, if you work hard, you can get it. For them, there's a lot more corruption, so if you don't have a recommendation, as they call it, from someone, if you're a politician, so on, you'll get in immediately, you know, all this kind of stuff. So they, they were just stuck, hopeless, hopeless. The original Greek word for, for church, right, 
is uh, ecclesia, <coughs> ecclesia, which in, uh, comes from uh, ekalain, in, sorry about the Greek, but, uh, there's, there's a point to it. It means to call out of, to call out of. So the church calls us out of, one could call it today normality, right? So the, what's considered normal or what the world does isn't necessarily normal at all. And it's definitely not necessarily God's will. So just because everyone is doing it, basically, just because everyone is doing it, or just because it's legal, doesn't necessarily mean it's God's will at all. So the church is supposed to be this family, this community that calls us out of the world, but not to be, not in a kind of a cultish fashion. We're in the world. We live in the world. All of you, when you finish, all of our students here in Holy Family, when, when, they, when they finish here, they will go to work in bars, restaurants, shops, engineers, there'll be politicians among them, there'll be chefs, there'll be everything, okay? <laughs> right, there'll be all sorts of things, okay? Uh, and they're going to live out in the world. They're going to live out in the world and bring the faith out there, okay? So we're in the world, but at the same time, not of the world. And, and that's the difficulty, and that's something we're, we're learning at the moment now in Ireland, how to be uh, in the church, right? And recognize that that means that we're, we're not like everyone else. In Ireland before, traditionally, that's what it, it actually did mean. Everyone, everyone went to Mass. Everyone did this thing. It was all completely normal. Whereas now it's starting to set us apart. Going to Mass, believing what, what, what the Lord teaches us, believing what the Church teaches us, this actually makes us different. It takes us out of the world. Okay? So the reason I'm thinking of this as well is I got sent an email during the week of a family uh, a lady who was just uh, working with with, um, with with children, and she was just shocked at how certain parents didn't mind at all that their little girl would go to uh, a disco wearing half nothing at 17, but absolutely slammed on the brakes when they suggested that, that same little girl go to a retreat for a weekend. You know, huge problem, retreat, what, some sort of a cult. I mean, are you crazy? Right? Whereas go to a, a dance event where you're wearing half knot and surrounded by booze and drink and lads with maybe not the best of intentions and probably drugs, and that's okay. Should we have to live? Like, that, that's normal. So we have to do that because that's normal. So we have to learn to live in normality, don't we? That's the whole thing. You see. It's, it's crazy. At times what, what is normal is not normal. <laughs> it's, it may be common, but really not normal. Okay? Just because it's common, just because it's done, doesn't make it right, doesn't make it good, and doesn't make it uh, God's will. So the church calls us out of the world. To be in the world, yes, but, but not of the world. Not of the world. So being not of the world is a thing that, by the way, exists here and here, right? in, in, our, in our understanding and in our, in our will, our intellect and our will. We can live, your house can physically be in a housing estate, there's no problem. But in our hearts and the way we live our lives, it's different. We see things differently. We react differently. You know, when everyone is, is fearful, uh, we had the, the gospel yesterday of Jesus uh, in the boat asleep and, and the waves are crashing over it. And the apostle says to Jesus, Jesus, do you not care we're going down? And he says, why are you so frightened? Why have you so little trust? Now, the boat's getting tossed everywhere, but do they believe that Jesus there can help them? That Jesus' presence is sufficient? Do we believe that? As, as, as Christians, as Catholics, when things seem to be stormy around us, do we believe that having God is enough? Do we? Because the world might be saying, oh, it's terrible, it's fearful, it's awful, the world is going to an end. That's not what we think. We think, yes, it's absolutely, look, it's, if anyone gets sick, if anyone has any sort of, or sort of a tragedy, it's, 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 it's sad, it's difficult, it's hard. I was talking to a nurse recently, working up north, uh, who's dealing with an awful lot of COVID patients and COVID deaths, and it's very, very challenging, absolutely. But do we lose hope because of that? Do we collapse and fall apart because of that? No. The Lord is our hope. We, we keep going. We keep praying. We pray for a solution and we get on with life. We just keep going. We'll console those who are mourning. Help those who are losing hope. But we, we don't fall into despair. Absolutely not. You know, even it's, a, like it's, a tradition, it's kind of a traditional Irish thing as well that when something goes wrong, uh, I know a few people who have this habit of when something is a little surprising frightening you know 
They say, oh, everything's frightening, my goodness. New government, I know, frightening, you know. <laughs> like, it's not really though, is it? Everything, no, no, things shouldn't be so frightening. When we have the Lord, we're called out of the world. The world is full of fear at the moment. But we're called to, to be in the world, but not of the world, called out of the world, into this family, called the church, where God is our father, our lady is our mother, and the church is our home. Jesus is our brother, we have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. And that's a beautiful way to live. And the more we do this, the more our church becomes relevant, not the opposite. People think the more the church conforms to the world, the more the church becomes relevant. Complete failure. That will be an absolute disaster because the more the church conforms to the world, the more irrelevant it becomes. Because it has got nothing to say. It just says what the world says. So, okay, why would I, why would I listen to the church? The church is different to the world. That's what makes us, it's not exactly its, it's reason for being. We're not trying to be different, but this is why our voice is relevant, because we're saying something different. In the Old Testament, the prophet's vocation wasn't to lead the people, it wasn't to govern the people, but it was to hold the governors accountable to God's law. In the same way, similarly today, the church's role is not to, our role is not to rule, our role is not to be in government but to hold those in government accountable, to hold those in responsibility accountable, to hold our, all to ourselves accountable to God's law, to what he asks of, of us, because he has called us out of darkness into a wonderful light. And so we ask the Lord today to renew our faith, renew our, our church, that we may be in the world, not of the world, full of light, full of hope, completely united to Jesus Christ, and to his will for our happiness. Amen.